the chance started off back in South Africa, we had to go through a phase of trials. We were trialing there for the chance, the global, the top 100, and I made it there. I couldn't believe it. Jeune, bah, mon rêve c'était de devenir footballeur professionnel. Donc euh, maintenant, on verra ce que réserve l'avenir. I phoned my mom and I just told her that I made the eight and she started crying and she put a tear in my eyes. L'annonce des huit joueurs a été quelque chose de terrible. Moi, quand mon nom est sorti, ma jambe tremblait comme ça. Back home, like a lot of people had faith in me. My best friend told me now that you will make the final eight, so I thank him a lot and my family. I got a positive personality. That gave me the edge to go for it, much, much closer to fulfill my dreams. It gives me so much confidence to know that coaches have belief in me here and I just want to work hard and prove them right and not waste the chance that I've been given. You're buzzing and you're just so happy. It was only till like, a, I guess, a few weeks later that I realised that what it actually meant, like I'm moving to England, I'm moving away, I'm pretty much the other side of the world for me, so I guess the challenge is that I had only just started and going to the academy, it all, it all started all over again. Packing up their life in a bag and bringing it across to the other side of the world. They're in an environment that's totally new to them, in a country that's totally new to them. I don't think we can take away just, just what a big ordeal that was for them. The, the hardest thing was just leaving my family behind because I know I'm going to miss them. I know it's, it's a sacrifice you need to do in, in order to be one of the best and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to become one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Je pense déjà avec les différents coachs qui sont à l'académie, on va beaucoup progresser, on va s'entraîner tous les jours. C'est un rythme de professionnel, donc on ne peut que progresser. Best facilities, best coaches, all I'm going to do is improve. Hopefully after this year, I'll move on to better things. The idea of the Nike Academy and the way it's set up is to actually put players into a shop window, to give them an opportunity to showcase themselves, to get them into professional football. The eight that we chose to come in were exceptional. It's raw talent, it's not been coached, it's not been nurtured as such, it's been allowed to be a free spirit. They need a little bit of guidance, but their technical ability will stand out. You keep going on that, okay? That's how you should look after that run. We do ask them to hit the ground running because the time in the programme goes so quick. I think the intensity for the first few weeks actually totally took them by surprise. I want you to work. It's only 90 minutes, fellas. You're more than fit enough to do that. Outside, TT! TT! Now, you did everything right until the point of shutting down. Because you've overcommitted. I'm saying to you, get round him, show him outside, but then when you're here, don't let him back in. He shouldn't be back in because Tash should be there. Now say, go on, then now beat me. There ain't a player in this country that will beat you. I grew up in the city of Ghana, Accra. In a family of six, I was, I was going to school like, every day, learning hard to become somebody in the future from where I came from and where I am now. There's a massive change today. Hey! Come on, let's have a finish! Good save, big fella! Excellent! It's well done, son! I was in the Nike Academy for about five years. I was alone and I was alone. Do you need to go in? Because of Connor? Uh, yeah. 
No. Yeah, no, it's... Where, it's when, one side. Yeah, yeah, okay, so we look for the space. Moon's biggest problem, it was just his language barrier. And he got on brilliantly with the lads, was very well respected, but he was respected because he could play. Hey, forward! Level, level! Something like this where it gives the boys this kind of an opportunity to play against these standard of players and you know there's always coaches here watching and, and people that are going to be spotting them. It's fantastic isn't it? With developing young players you've got to be patient and you can see the work that's going on with this initiative that there are players there. Yeah, this is straight after their goal yeah? Good reaction, great reaction, great play. Here he goes. TT, I can't knock that because you made the keeper work because you've started deep in your own half and you've ended up in their box getting a shot off. Yeah? Gone across the goalkeeper, which I'd ask you to do. He's made a save. But there are mistakes individually which has led to the goal. Fabio. You're the biggest culprit for me because you're so uptight that he ain't give you the ball. What could you have done? Go and stop the game. But because you're disappointed because Moon didn't pass the ball to you or he's had a poor shot, you've switched off. Pour moi, c'était la première fois de voir tout ça et, et c'était difficile de prendre sur soi-même et de, voilà, de, 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 de surpasser le fait des médias, le fait de la pression, du regard des gens et surtout de, 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 de l'affrontement avec les autres joueurs. Il fallait surmonter cette pression, il fallait surmonter ce stress. We have been very pleased with you, very happy over the last few days now. All of a sudden, you're concentrating, you're working hard, yes. You're getting on with your training. I am now seeing the Fabio Tonini I saw in the charts. You understand? <laughs> that player. And that's the person I want to see. Since the start of the academy, we've played 22 games. Played against the likes of Inter Milan, Genk, Arsenal. I've scored 14 goals, so I'm quite happy with that. I've been captain for the past two games before. It's a great honour and it's just about the team and all the players playing well so we can showcase ourselves. You're in, son! You're in! Go on! I scored a few goals but... Obviously scoring against Inter Milan was, was a good memory that I'll probably won't forget. Everybody there, you can hear them saying positive things about you when you, if you do something on the pitch in front of them. And to hear those people give you words of praise, it, it feels very, very cool. He's one of the most talented, raw potential players that I've ever come across in my life. Can travel with a ball, can pass a ball, great vision and awareness. He has the ability to look like he's absolutely exhausted and then just go and breeze past people. Hits 60 yard balls like as if he's playing a five yard pass. Reading really liked Tom, phoned me, said we'd like to have him in. Tom went over to Reading, trialled him for three weeks. He then came back and said, yeah, we want to take him. I was obviously stoked about it, buzzing, and I went down there and I did quite well. And when they wanted to sign me, it got even better, and then from there I went on to not being able to attain a work permit. I guess my dreams and what I'd been thinking of in my head just all sort of came crashing down, and probably the biggest setback I've had in, in my life. Tom failed to get a professional contract at Reading, so went back to Australia at Christmas time and was picked up straight away by Central Coast Mariners. What I think was a surprise to a lot of people is how quick he got in the first team at Central Coast, but it, it didn't come as a surprise to me. I know from being at clubs myself in a professional environment, you get a trialist in, that trialist has to make an impact on you instantly. It's down to the boys to, to just go out there and be the best they can be every game. If we get a phone call, brilliant, off you go. If we don't, we move on to the next one. It's very, very complicated to be a footballer in the sense that people have a routine, every day we have to train, and every week we have to prove that we are on the top. We actually think you are a very, very good technical player but you're a technical player in, in our games 
for maybe 20, 25, 30 minutes. I want you to do what you do, but be more consistent. Two tiers of the match, and the other tiers, I'm not very really concentrated because after that, there's fatigue, etc. Oui, comme il a été attaquant avant, euh, il sait de quoi il parle, c'est-à-dire qu'il sait ce qu'on ressent. Six mois à l'issue, mais ça, quand on me sort, je suis un peu castigué de quoi, non? Ah, je suis un peu pour le regard de l'équipe académique, pour le regard de l'Ouest, parce que je suis coach, je suis je suis un peu plus en charge, je suis scout, je suis un peu. the opportunity to watch the Nike Academy play um, because I was aware of the, the sort of talent there. Got to see Moon and, and Titi play and I could just tell that they had something a little bit unique, both of them, and hopefully this is the environment for them to, to really take that next step um, as footballers. For the past 12 months, a lot have changed. Because I'm now like, in, the, in the real world now, like doing a lot of stuff for myself, working, getting paid before the chance. I was still in school, my parents kind of did everything for me, and, but now like, I'm, I'm catering for myself now, I live on my own. I go here and like, the first thing I was kind of scared, nervous, because I don't speak the same language. But on the pitch, I'm like, more confident, because I know I'm playing football, I'm very good at it. It's quite pleasant, cold, and apparently it's a skin in town, so it's kind of snow every day, and I have to get used to it. First game I got on the pitch and like the fans didn't knew anything about me and it was one against the favourites of the league and I came on and like everyone was like, who is this guy? <laughs> I scored in the second game. One of the best goals I've scored in my life and, and I'm really happy for that. After the game, like everyone was impressed. Like I always knew like my first impression would speak a lot about you. Moon and I, we came from a long journey to where we are now, so it's really good to have him around and share experience and stuff. Moon leave like five minutes for me, so I do go to his, talk about life, especially about where he came from, South Korea, so I try to learn other people's culture. How's the scan? Yeah, so soft. Still so? Yeah. It's ice pack. Ice pack. Until I got injured on Saturday while I was playing in the game, he's going to the uh, hospital to have a scan to see what's wrong, and I pray that it's just a bruise and not あ、僕は試合感覚と言えて、そうで、結構そんな感覚だったよ。あ、一旦 일단 여기 와가지고 이제 더 이제 한달 아니면 두달한 번씩 이제 이렇게 큰 박스로 이렇게 택배를 보내주시는데요 한국 음식을 그때마다 이제 챙겨 먹고 그래요. 그럼 이제 더 한국이 더 그립죠. There are sacrifices to be made, but there are hundreds and hundreds of footballers out there with ability, thousands that would change places. They'll have a springboard to develop themselves tactically, to, to experience different types of football, different culture. Their job now is to, is to play football and try and take the, the next step. If they have a really good career, yeah, they can, they can walk away from their career never having to work again. The majority of players don't do that. I came here for the first week, uh, we played Celtic, that was like my first game. And then a few minutes into training, like I hurt my ankle, like I snapped my ankle ligament. I've been out like three months and I like had to go for a steroid injection just to take the pain away because uh, a specialist recommended me to have an operation in January, which I just had. It was very tough. I was gutted because I wanted to play. I wanted to get a contract in England. That's that's my dream. As I 
say to myself everything happens for a reason i know in the future cool things will come like god knows why i had to get injured like at, at this moment that was just a, a downfall for me but with my character like i motivated myself to get back and just do my rehab and start playing again the most motivation is like my friends like riyad he's been like pushing me since the beginning like telling me i will do well and all that since we've been here in england we've been there for each other like helping each other like we've become more close like real brothers we do like have faith in ourselves we believe in each other without belief we like wouldn't be as high as we are today like being at the nike academy this players like Jono that's out for for months and months and like I can just imagine how they feel waking up every morning thinking ah oh, like I can't do what I really want to do or what I love each and every moment is special and you never know what's going to happen tomorrow you have to treat each and every day like it's your last play each and every game like it's the last 90 minutes you're going to play we played a friendly against Shamrock Rovers the next day the manager he gave me a call and he said now nah, we want you to come over for a trials he said to me like you did really well i was over the moon shamrock rovers they champions in the irish league fans come out they pay their money to come and watch so i mean there's going to be pressure expectations are high here you're expected to win the league for me it's not about age it's about talent he's one of the best 19 year old goalkeepers that i've ever seen to be honest The manager said to me like you've really done well and he gave me a chance against the team that's top of the league. When I walked out for the league game, I got butterflies as I walked out. It was the best feeling I've ever had in my life. It was the best feeling ever. I think it was within three weeks of being back. The manager came up to me and said, uh, "How do you actually go if you started tomorrow?" And he has a cheeky grin on his face as in like he knew it was going to be my debut in my first match and I started the match and I guess I wasn't quite used to the intensity and lasted about 70 minutes my second start my third appearance and I scored that goal about I think 5 or 10 minutes into the match and as a cracker and I guess that was probably the first point where people started to take notice and then the week after that we were at home in front of the home crowd and I had all my family watching and, and I scored another one Leah dives in breaks a rocket turned out to be I guess a decisive goal in the match and we won the game. He's a star in the making Tom Rodgick. It's crazy how football works. Soon went from being someone that nobody knew about to a regular name within the football community. But to get my first international cap at, at any level. I was excited as I would be and just something I, I guess I won't forget. A very proud moment for myself. Putting on that uh, green and gold jersey was pretty pretty special feeling. start packing like tonight and leave tomorrow. I want to get back and work on my ankle. So I'm going to stay in Durban for a while, do my rehab and just focus on getting my ankle better be before I go to a pro club. Oh, oh, the most that I'm going to miss is like the lads because like we like a family now and like we bonded like that's what I'm going to miss the most and just being around the coaches and the environment. I'll be a bit upset because I'm going to miss them. I have to do it and say my goodbyes to them. My dream is still the same. Like as I'm telling myself, like every night I like pray, tell myself when I get back home I need to work like 100% hard and like get myself back into pro football because I know I will. I believe in myself and I know that the man upstairs believes in me. At the start of the season, I felt that I was flying. I was on trial, and I thought, all right, maybe this is a chance where I'm going to push on and try and get a contract and leave the academy. And then that's when I got injured. I was out for about maybe six weeks, and I was back to square one. Had to get my fitness back, had to get my form back. By the time I got all those back, like, we're nearly at the end of the season. So it's kind of really a bad hit for me, but I'm still going to work hard. I'm not going to use that as an excuse not to get a contract. 
This is probably the biggest game of the season, considering that we're still here. And yeah, we've got three days left, but we've just got to grab this opportunity now to help us with our futures. Bah aujourd'hui, on joue contre Dan Tarline. Ils sont intéressés par moi, donc aujourd'hui, je dois, je dois, je dois montrer ce que je sais faire. There should be no fear. There should be no nerves. Make sure that you come off and say, "I did my job today." That you don't come off disappointed. You can't ask any more of the boys, they've done everything they can. And really for me, it's quite an emotional afternoon because of just saying sort of goodbye to the boys in there and in particular Toby and Moose because they've come through the Chance programme. I know I've screamed, I know I've shouted, I know I've bit some of their heads off, but it's because I care. And what they'll find in life is that people stop talking to you if they don't care. While we're still talking, while we're still going at them, we care. Je pars demain en France et euh, ouais, je vais retourner voir ma famille pour voir si où je vais signer, ce que je vais faire, etc. The offer was a full scholarship to go and play at a college in West Virginia in the States and also get a degree so that is a good option if I don't make it. It's really hard to make decisions like that which can determine your future in the long run. I'll just take my time and decide what's right for me, what feels right for my development and then make the decision from there. I used to play soccer in the backyard with my brother and my two cousins. Those games were probably some of the most hated of my life. <laughs> I used to hate losing, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's it off on the left. Togrenong United. This is my first football club when I was about five or six. I guess all my earliest memories and when I was a child, it's my, my football career was here. <laughs> I remember one time my uncle came down and watched from Sydney. He goes, I'll give you five bucks for every goal you score. And when, when you're a kid, you're thinking five bucks. And in my head, I'm thinking, well, doing the math, oh, <laughs> wow. Anyway, I ended up scoring about six or seven goals. And he goes, wait, I haven't even had that much on me. I've got to go to ATM. <laughs> I started playing football because it was fun. That's the reason I've, I've always played it, because I enjoy it. I guess only recently it, it, it hit me that it, it is a job. It's your income. It's a very important thing in your life. I mean. Everyone needs a job and I'm getting paid to do something I love and not everyone's able to do that. I mean, the other day I was just trying to count which countries I've been through, through football and um, I sort of lost count. Just to experience those things, it's just amazing when you think that it's all because of football and all because of this great game that you get to have these life experiences and, and make these friendships that, that you have for life. I was checking my live score app one, one morning and I was just scrolling down as I do, checking the scores around the world and it had um, Shamrock Rovers match and I clicked on it just to see if they won. And it had a red card, Rayad Peter, so I was like, this isn't right. Uh, surely not the guy I was just training with a couple of months ago, was a keeper has been red carded in a, in a professional match over there playing for Shamrock and it's just hilarious knowing that, you know, this guy was one of my friends and one of my teammates such a short time ago. His first pressure situation didn't go well. But listen, this happens, he's 20 years of age. I mean, like, he's got another 15 years ahead of him to play professional football. The amount of time Riyad spends on the training ground is phenomenal. I mean, he's living the dream, but he hasn't got money. He's got enough to live on and maybe buy a few bits and pieces, but that comes later, after the hard work. I like to dream big, and I don't just want to settle for just anything. Like, I want to be something in life, and I want to be a good role model, not just for my own kids, but for many people out there.
back on these names, there's a huge smile inside of me and a lovely feeling to say we've helped them on their way, we've sort of imparted some of our knowledge to them, hopefully made them better players and better individuals as human beings as well. A week or so ago I got a phone call off Fabio to say that he's now signed for FC Brussels, which is a club that's close to his heart, which is a club where he started off as a young boy, and I actually think that's a really positive step for Fabio. Staff had the opportunity to go to a club in Tunisia, but I also know that he was trying to look at something a bit closer to home. A very single-minded individual to say, actually, I'm not sure this is the right club for me, where I want to be in my life with my family right now, and I take my hat off to him for that. And Toby's been picked up by a club called Hayes and Yedding, who are in the Conference South. I do think in the next couple of years we'll see Toby in the professional game. Jono was a, a, an unfortunate one. For him to have had the operation he had and it was a four or five month rehab plan, but he stayed here to finish his schooling, which was quite important to him as well. If he can build himself up and becomes the player that we saw in the chance, then I've got absolutely, again, no doubt that, that he shouldn't have a career in professional football, whether it be in South Africa or whether it be somewhere else throughout the world. TT's not far off being sold maybe to a, a top Premier League club in, in Sweden, which is the Outsvenskan League. And I know that Moon's training with Sundsvall, which are uh, an Outsvenskan side as well. So those two boys are doing something right out there. A great outcome and it's a fantastic feeling when someone says that they've been offered a contract because it's the start of, of their dream in my opinion. Eighteen months is a long time. Being back there in their shoes, I guess I can relate to what they're going through. Got the pleasure of introducing Tom Rogic, who I'm sure all of you guys know very well. He was out here um, two years ago, and obviously he got chosen as the final eight. He's gone on to some amazing things since being selected to go through the Nike Academy. Something for you guys to aspire to. You just gotta, I guess, give it your all because you don't have another shot after after today's game. So I just say. You know, leave it all out there on the pitch and don't come off saying oh, I should have I should have tracked back or I should have made that run. It's weird because I stood back and I like I gave a talk to these guys who are almost my age or a year younger, so it feels a bit I guess awkward in a way because like it's just the start for me. It's not like I'm some expert of footballer who's been around the block and knows everything. Um, I still got a long way to go, so I know that. Hey, you got a nice way to all of us. Cheers mate. You too. <laughs> It was pretty cool being here and just like sort of watching it. I don't think there's any use in getting caught up in the matches I've played or the goals I've scored because they don't count for anything now. I've played only a handful of matches in my professional career. I've been a pro for uh, five months now, six months, so I know there's a long way to go and I know it's just a start. Rogic has played four times for the Australian national team. And it's Commons! Brilliant! It's Tom Rogic, the new boy in his Celtic debut, was the architect. That goal has class written all over it. 